I had the great opportunity to preach at Branch uh, Saturday just gone. Um, now, always time pressures are always with you and you kind of, you preach, you're watching the clock to make sure you don't run over. Uh, the first half, obviously, wanted to make sure that uh, we weren't late uh, in going to having our pizzas. Um, so I kind of cut a little bit out of uh, the talk. And what I wanted to do, the opportunity with a technology we have, was just to bring that in. Now, hopefully it didn't lose anything, not delivering it on the night. Um, but as I say, uh, the opportunity to uh, to put it out uh, now um, is it, just a great opportunity. Um, so we were looking at, um, for those who maybe weren't there, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Uh, we're doing it in two parts. I'm, I did uh, the first part um, Saturday just gone. Adam is going to be doing the second half uh, for us. Uh, in our November one, the 4th of November. And uh, as we look through, I'll just read it through, actually. Uh, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So the first half I, I looked at um, verses 16 and 17 and the second half, which I won't really kind of touch on now, but I looked at verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. And uh, I, what I wanted to do with the, the first half, I split it into three different sections or I drew kind of three elements out of it. Um, the first one there, um, Jesus tells them to go uh, to the mountain and they obey him. Um, so just that, that idea of, of uh, the disciples following Jesus and, and us being disciples following Jesus as well. So copying what the disciples did. And one of the first things really to learn is to be obedient. That is tough. We know that, don't we? Um, to be obedient. Um, the third one is those three little words, but some doubted. And just that encouragement, um, if I can use that word, um, that actually, yes, even some of the disciples doubted. Um, they were with him uh, for three years, um, but yet they still doubted. Um, so actually not to kind of um, fear our doubts, but kind of grasp hold of them and actually wrestle with them. That was the, the kind of the challenge. And the middle one there, and when they saw him, they worshipped him. And so that's what I what you wanted to concentrate on a little bit more just now that I kind of a little bit I missed out. And um, we talked about worship being a lot more than just singing songs, um, that actually uh, our whole life, everything that we do is an is an act of worship and therefore potentially not an act of worship as well. So um, and I use the example of, of being horrible to Adam um and uh, saying he's such an idiot and actually that thought process and those words whether it was spoken to somebody else or or even to him what well, actually um i can't say that was an act of worship um there so it's that concept and that idea that everything we do try to make it an act of worship and so that's really kind of where I want to go, really, just to go a little bit deeper. Uh, um, and I just kind of wrote this, that it's with every fibre um, of our being that we worship God. Now, that is impossible. We know we sin um, and that's why we have God's grace. We rely on God's grace. That's why we're gracious to other people as well, obviously. And um, we have forgiveness. God forgives us. Jesus died on that cross. Um, so we could gain forgiveness for our sins. And uh, just to add in a little bit, actually, that that's not automatic, that we need to say sorry. Um, now, I'm not going to go into the whole um, if I sin and then die, what happens? Um, God is a gracious God um, and he knows your heart uh, and where you are. But what I want to look at that I didn't touch on was um, this idea that actually uh, even though we're unable to worship God with our every fibre because we sin, there is justification and sanctification. Um, and I just felt there wasn't quite enough time to really kind of push this through. So just a few moments now to, to, to do that. So in looking at these two words, it's really Christian words that we use. And I guess to a point, um, it's good to know it. We're not going to be tested in heaven uh, when we get to uh, the pearly gates and Peter's there and he goes through his checklist and make sure, OK, yes, your name is on. Right. Just a few more questions. 
questions before I let you in. What's justification? What's sanctification? That's not going to happen. We talked about the thief on the cross as well. And there's a great, I think it's Alistair Blagg or Blagg um, that um, uh, first preached this, that concept of actually the thief on the cross. Um, he didn't do anything. He didn't do a Bible study. He never went to church, etc., etc. And yet he believed in Jesus and Jesus said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. And we believe that to be true. So don't kind of, oh, I've got to learn this, but it's really good to, to know as we want to grow as Christians to understand more about God's love for us. So uh, justification, OK, sets people free from sin's penalty. And sanctification means being set free from sin's power. OK, so there is almost a kind of a before and an after, if, if you like. So justification is something that God does for us. OK, so that's Jesus on the cross, setting people free uh, from the penalty of sin, dealing with sin, uh, the cost of of sin. Jesus dealt with that justification and sanctification. God does it both. Um, so let's not pretend we, we do anything within this. Um, sanctification is what God does with us. OK, so justification, what God does for us. Sanctification, what God does with us. So when we become a Christian, we are set free. Justification. And, you know, um, silly little thing, maybe to remember, I am just in. OK, <laughs> although I'm a sinner, I am just in. I am justified. I have been set free and we make a decision to become a disciple. So we become a Christian. And if you like, it's not really a kind of a different phases, but it's that sense of then we become a disciple. Um, and that's really important. Uh, what, what Adam is going to be preaching on a little bit about the second half, 19 and 20 of uh, Matthew 28. Um, uh, be looking at kind of what it is to be a disciple uh, a little bit more. Um, but as a disciple, we decide to leave our sinful nature behind. We were a sinner. We turned around. We've repented. That's that, that, that sense of repent, turn around, gone the other way. And um, we leave our sinful nature behind. Now, yes, of course, we continue to sin, but our aim is not to. That's what we try to do as a Christian. Uh, so sanctification is ongoing. OK, throughout my life, I have sanctification happening on a, on a daily, uh, let's be honest, on a daily basis. The Holy Spirit, uh, you can say, Holy Spirit, please sanctify me okay continue to work with me to make me more like christ even on on that respect so the holy spirit sanctifies us now again so you've got justification just in okay a little thing i just uh uh i say made up it might be helpful it might not uh, but sanctification you've got s-a-n to begin with with sanctification um and i've just made a little silly thing up that is uh, the S-A-N standing for send assistance now. So we can say when that that, that sense that we're, we're either we're, we're, we're sinning, for what, you know, gossiping, whatever it might be. Um, and we can say, please send assistance now, God. And we know the Holy Spirit is there with us to help us. So uh, just a, a, a hopefully a, a helpful thing on from a Branch on Saturday, just gone. Uh, justification I am just in I've just got myself in or actually I've made that decision and God's got me just in and then uh, sanctification send assistance now I want to be your follower Jesus thank you uh, if you've made it through these uh, nine and a half minutes uh, watching this little bit of extra um, and as I say, if you're able to, uh, if you're within the age bracket, uh, if you're around the Forest of Dean, uh, you're very welcome to come along to Branch. Uh, it's at Forest and Wye Community Church, where we run it from. Uh, it's for uh, all the churches across the Forest of Dean. Very welcome to come and join us if you're in comprehensive school, um, year seven to year, uh, I've got to think now, uh, year 13. 
which I think is a kind of um, A level two or uh, however you kind of describe it as now. I'm showing my age, so I better say cheerio and we'll see you sometime soon. Bye bye.